Now we install another tool called Artifactory. Artifactory is an open source repository manager which is published and maintained by a company called JFrog. What is a repository manager? Well, Artifactory is a special repository for your artifacts. You produce these artifacts as part of your continuous integration, continuous delivery, and deployment processes when you compile and build your applications or create web applications, even when you create some packages. These artifacts could be some Java compiled code, HTML code, configuration files, or any other type of file-based components produced by these processes and which are necessary to run or configure your target system. One of the most useful attributes of this Artifacts Repository Manager is that once we have stored our artifacts in the repository, it is accessible to all our team members and they can download these artifacts from anywhere, anytime. Let's take a real world scenario. Say there is a large software development team, which is working on a project and there is a configured continuous integration and continuous delivery process in place. After the source code is processed by the CI-CD pipeline, it will produce the artifacts from the source code. The team has an option to store these artifacts on a network storage share, but this becomes cluttered very quickly. It is hard to keep track of the versioning of the artifacts, hard to implement security and access rules. This is where a repository manager like Artifactory shines. The team can store their artifacts in this repository and their artifacts could be distributed to other team members, partners, customers in a reliable, efficient, secure, and stable manner. What's more, these repositories integrate seamlessly with Jenkins. So the whole process of storing and distributing the artifacts could be completely automated. Okay. Now that we know what Artifactory is, let's go through the installation process and start by discussing our environment. A word of advice here. If possible, you should install Artifactory on a dedicated physical or virtual server, which is separate from the Jenkins server. This is to ensure that there is no conflict between these servers. Moreover, in the real world scenario, these two servers need to be accessible by different group of people. So it's a good general practice as well. So, for installing Artifactory, we have spun up a new virtual machine. We are working here with the second virtual machine, which also has CentOS Linux installed on it. To get complete version information for your Linux distribution, all you need is to execute cat forward slash proc forward slash version. As you can see here, we have the Red Hat edition of Linux, and it is the CentOS distribution. So, just like we did with Jenkins installation, we need to take care of the prerequisites for the installation. Furthermore, just like Jenkins, Artifactory also requires Java to install and run. And specifically, it needs the Java version from Oracle. To install the required Java version, you can go to oracle.com slash tetnetwork slash downloads. And here you will find the version of Java you need. If you are having trouble finding this page, you can Google download Java, and the first link should lead you to this page. On this page, select the appropriate version based on the operating system you are running. It may be Linux or Windows. Just remember that you need JDK. Just for your information, JDK is short for Java Development Kit. And this development kit is an essential prerequisite for Artifactory installation. Just as a reminder, we can install Java using any package manager as well. After installing Java, we can confirm the version by executing java-version. So here we can verify that we have the runtime environment installed and Java version 1.8.0 underscore 101. So this pretty much satisfies the minimum requirements for our Artifactory installation. Now let's set up our Java home. To do that, you need to execute the shell command update-alternatives-display-java. And this last path in this list is our Java home that we need to set in our bash profile. We will open our bash profile with the VI editor. Here we will add the path that we copied earlier and also set up an environment variable for java underscore home. Okay, that looks good. Now let's save our bash profile. Let's reload our user and check our Java home. Now we can continue with the installation of Artifactory. 
To start installing Artifactory open source, all you need to do is go to JFrog's installation guide for Artifactory. Here you can just choose the necessary installation package based on the operating system that you are running. It is recommended that you use a package manager like RPM to make the installation process easy and painless. Let's choose Artifactory Open Source Edition. Artifactory also has a commercial edition with more enhanced features. For now, we can just use the open source edition, which is free for use. Let's copy paste these shell commands to install our instance of Artifactory using the RPM distribution. First of all, we will download our Artifactory installation repository information using the wget command. If you don't have the wget command, you can install it via the yum package manager. After the installation is complete, we can use wget. Good. With this wget, now the Artifactory repository information installation package has been downloaded onto our system. This file contains the information, which our RPM package manager can use to download and install the required software. The next step is to move this repository information to the target directory where our package manager will become aware of this repository and register it as one of the known repositories. And now the last step is to use the yum install command and install the Artifactory open source edition. Let's give it a few minutes. There, the installation is now complete. After the installation is complete, we can now start our Artifactory instance by using the service commands. We will execute service Artifactory start, and we will get some information about Artifactory, which confirms that Artifactory has been successfully installed and started on our server. Artifactory is built on top of Tomcat application server. That is why when we install Artifactory open source, it also installs Apache Tomcat server. So how does our Artifactory work? Let's check it out. Let's try to access the Apache Tomcat instance, which was installed with the Artifactory. Let's open a new tab in the browser and navigate to server.noodle.tetra colon 8081 forward slash Artifactory. Please note the complete URL. It is important to append Artifactory to this URL. Why should we do this? We do this because our Artifactory open source is based on Apache Tomcat. Apache Tomcat is used to deploy your Java servlets and JSPs. So in your Java project, you can build your WAR, short for Web Archive, file and just drop it in the deploy directory with Tomcat. So basically in this setup, Apache Tomcat is the HTTP server, serving HTTP requests and it is also the servlet and JSP server container. When we navigate to our Artifactory instance, we are basically accessing a web application which has been deployed into Apache Tomcat server instance. Artifactory is just a Java web application which has been deployed as a WAR file into Apache Tomcat. Nothing more, nothing less. What is the significance of this? It means that after installation of Artifactory, you will have a full installation of Apache Tomcat on your server. And this server is not exclusive to Artifactory only. You can just as easily install other Tomcat web apps and Tomcat admin web apps by executing the yum install command into this instance of Apache Tomcat. This is convenient because if you are working with Artifactory, there is a good chance you will be working with other Java-based web applications. So you can unify the applications and your Artifactory instance into the same Apache Tomcat server. Apache Tomcat got installed because Artifactory has a dependency on it. Our package manager duly noted this dependency and installed the necessary components transparently. It also configured the necessary components for our operating system. Let's open the configuration file tomcat.conf. Let's update this line and update the Java OPTS configuration with an updated configuration. This will optimize the use of JVM and help run Apache Tomcat more smoothly.
After editing our configuration file, let's also edit our users. This Tomcat users XML file is a Tomcat configuration file which stores all the users and their respective roles who have access to their Tomcat instance. Here you can edit users and their roles to fit the requirements of your environment. For now, let's review the process of creating a super user. Within the context of Apache Tomcat, a super user is similar to an administrator user who has access to pretty much all the functionality provided by the software component. The default file already has some boilerplate XML code to configure our users and roles. We can just repurpose this and uncomment these lines of XML code. And as for the user, we will add a username of admin and provide a password. And that is all. We have created a new user called admin, which has a password of admin admin. We also assign all the relevant roles to this user, and as such, this user has all the necessary permissions and is effectively our super user. Let's save this file and run our Tomcat server instance. We will execute the command systemctl start tomcat. Okay, to confirm, let's check its status by executing systemctl status tomcat. Looks like it's running now. We can access our Tomcat instance now. All we need to do is use our server DNS name, but with 8080 port, because that is the default port which Apache Tomcat uses. server.noodle.tetra colon 8080. Here we are. This is the default homepage for Apache Tomcat where we can check the status of the server, and we can even manage our app's deployment in our instance of Tomcat. In order to enter the management area, we need to provide our credentials. We will use the admin user credentials we just set up. As we can see here, all our web applications are listed here. You can see all the folders in a Tomcat in the root of the Tomcat server. Getting back to our Artifactory instance, we can see it here. You can see that this repository provides tons of features. But since we deployed the open source edition, certain features are not available. Even with the free features available, Artifactory is an excellent tool to manage your artifacts. But in case you need access to more commercial features, you will need to purchase the product. The features annotated with the not available are the features which can only be accessed in the paid version of the software. Let's explore our repository. Here in the Artifacts package, we can review and manage the storage which is managed by Artifactory to store and deploy our artifacts. As we build and deploy new artifacts via our CI CD processes, they will all show up here. Artifactory will maintain and manage the location, storage, versioning, and security of all our artifacts. Moving along, we also have this tab called Build Browser. Artifactory has built-in capability to connect our CI CD infrastructure. For instance, Artifactory can connect to our Jenkins infrastructure or even JetBrains Team City infrastructure. So this screen can pull the information about the build jobs from these integrated servers and show them here. So far, we have been browsing the Artifactory instance as an anonymous user. Let's log on by clicking on this link at the top right corner. We will use the credentials of our admin user, and now we are logged into our server as a super user. Now we can manage our Artifactory system and configure all these options and settings. Remember that options which are marked with an asterisk are not free and you need to pay for it and buy the license.